wealth, sex, fame, food, drink and play are universal human desires. If people indulge their desires, tragedy will befall them. In Lao Tzu, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it is said, craving for visual splendor can distort our vision and impede our ability to see the truth about things. Basking in musical amusement can numb our hearing and impede our ability to appreciate the finer meanings in music. Indulgence in fine cuisine can dull our taste buds and impede our ability to appreciate the natural flavour of food. Wallowing in the thrill of game hunting can make us reckless and lose our sanity. Being desirous of rare and precious objects can cause our greediness to grow and drive us to behave wickedly. This statement of Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism, is to warn and enlighten the world that if one indulges one's desires and covets sensual pleasures, tragedy will follow. Hence, in the Book of Rites, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it is said, Pride should not be allowed to grow. Desires should not be indulged. The will should not be gratified to the full. Pleasure should not be carried to excess. Professor Yu Li Liu, from the Department of Philosophy at the Party School of the Central Committee of the CPC, will use the governing principles of ancient China and various ancient classics to tell us that indulging one's desires is equivalent to a quick death. Here is the lectures on the governing principles of ancient China. Desires should not be indulged. Professor Yu Li Liu graduated with a bachelor's and master's degree in philosophy from Renmin University of China. She is currently a professor at the Department of Philosophy at the Party School of Central Committee of CPC and a mentor for doctoral students majoring in ethics. She is also a visiting professor at Tsinghua College, Sun Yat-sen University. Professor Yu Li Liu has published many academic papers, received a PhD from the University of Hull, UK, and is a postdoctoral scholar at the National University of Singapore. She has been invited to give lectures and participate in workshop seminars in the UK, Italy, the USA, Canada, Australia, Japan, Singapore, Indonesia and Hong Kong. In 2015, 2016 and 2017, she was invited to UNESCO headquarters in Paris to give talks based on the governing principles of ancient China. The central theme of her talks was the importance of the sage's education. In other words, learning from the wisdom of the past and also how to promote moral education. She has contributed greatly towards the dissemination of Oriental culture in the Western world. This video was edited by the Governing Principles of Ancient China Translation Team of the Pure Land Learning College Association and is based on the lectures by Professor Yu Li Liu. Dear friends, greetings to you all. Today our topic is, Desires Should Not Be Indulged. Previously, we said that cultivation of oneself is fundamental for governing a country and that cultivation of virtues starts with eliminating greed. Then we discussed the harm of indulging in wealth and fame. Today we will talk about the harm of indulging in eating, drinking and playing. All of these are different types of desires. Let's first talk about indulgence in eating. In Lao Tzu, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it is said, indulgence in fine cuisine can dull our taste buds and impede our ability to appreciate the natural flavor of food. For example, if we like spicy food, in the end, our ability to taste will be impaired and become weak. 
then we will no longer taste the original light flavours of some foods, like the natural tastiness of green vegetables. If we do not indulge in eating and our diet becomes milder, the more sensitive our taste buds will become. We will then be able to taste the original natural flavour of food. Indulgence in eating cannot only impair our sensation of taste, but also can create a heavy burden on our body and eventually lead to diseases. It is well known that, according to scientific research, high blood sugar, high blood cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, etc. are all related to the excessive consumption of salt, oil, meat and processed food. This is just as the ancient Chinese said, illness enters the body through the mouth. This happens not only because of contaminated food, but also because inappropriate and excessive food can cause diseases. Therefore, an excellent way to avoid disease is to not indulge our desire for eating. Next, let's talk about the indulging in alcohol. In Bao Putz, the last volume of The Governing Principles of Ancient China, there is a chapter titled, Warnings About Alcohol. This chapter explains the harm that results from drinking. It says, literate people know the harm of drinking alcohol, but are unable to stop or even control their alcohol intake. They indulge their desire in alcohol and disregard it as one of the root causes of misfortune. Although enjoying alcohol is like relieving internal heat with a cold drink and provides comfort for the time being, it's actually causing great harm to the body. This chapter also depicts chaotic scenes of drunks. When the banquet started, everyone seemed to be cautious and dignified. People were well-groomed and neatly dressed, Amiably and peacefully, like reading a poem, they raised their glasses and toasted each other's health. When getting a bit drunk, they could still maintain self-control, but after continued heavy drinking, they gradually lost control of their bodies. Also, their behaviours became impulsive and irrational. Becoming thoroughly drunk, from time to time, they might even break into dancing, yelling and shouting. The entire banquet is transformed, just like a pot of boiling water that is endlessly bubbling and gushing. Some argue with others and are eager to prove their point. Some laugh uncontrollably. Some talk to themselves. Some vomit on the banquet tables, chairs and all over the place. Some stumble, crawl and stagger along. People who normally behave with high integrity become dishonest. People who are normally timid in disposition become loud and obnoxious. People who were normally mature and stable become frivolous. People who are normally dignified and solemn begin to stir up trouble. People who are usually unsociable become very vocal and engaged with others. Due to alcohol, the proprieties are breached and faults emerge. Arrogant and malevolent attitudes unfold. At the end of the chapter, it talks about the harm caused by the indulgence in alcohol throughout history. About 4,000 years ago, Yi Di, who invented a method to make alcohol, offered fine wine to Yu the Great, the King of Sha. After having a taste, Yu the Great realised the harm of alcohol, which may lead to the fall of a country, and so he refused to drink it. Because of this, Yi Di 
was estranged by the king. Thus, the Xia dynasty flourished. However, during the later period of the Xia dynasty, wine was as abundant as pools of water. King Jie of Xia indulged in alcohol and thus the Xia dynasty perished. The same thing happened during the late Shang dynasty. King Zhou of Shang indulged in alcohol and thus the Shang dynasty perished. There are many examples in history that indulgence in drinking leads to misfortunes and tragedies. Because of alcohol, Duke Feng lost his state. General Guan Fu's whole family clan was killed. Governor Tsi Bu lost his chance at promotion and Zi Tian lost his position. They were all due to their indulgence in drinking. Nevertheless, those who enjoy pleasure in drinking are still many. Those who abstain are few. It is expected that people can control alcohol consumption. In this chapter, Warnings About Alcohol, the ancient Chinese described the adverse consequences of drinking alcohol in vivid detail. Upon reading this chapter, those who indulge in drinking should consider it a warning. Eating, drinking and playing are basic desires of human beings. However, everything has limits. Excessive eating, drinking and playing are indulgences. Once a person indulges, it can lead to damage of one's health and morality, or worst of all, it may create misfortune for oneself and then one will be doomed. Professor Liu quoted a phrase in Lao Tzu, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China. Indulgence in fine cuisine can dull our taste buds and impede our ability to appreciate the natural flavour of food. She told us that indulgence in eating not only impairs one's taste buds and results in all kinds of diseases, but it will also ruin one's moral character. Therefore, the ancients warn against gluttony. In Christianity, gluttony heads the list of the seven deadly sins and carries severe punishments. Professor Liu also used the chapter Warnings About Alcohol from Bao Butz, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China to warn us that the harm caused by indulgence in alcohol should not be taken lightly. Alcohol abuse can at least create individual misfortune or worse lead to the downfall of a nation. Some people may think that this is just alarmist talk. However, Professor Liu used ancient and modern examples to show us that misfortunes and disasters from the indulgence in alcohol are true and not simply idle talk. Let us continue with lectures on the governing principles of ancient China. Desires should not be indulged. Many people say that drinking can relieve stress. This statement appears true, but is actually wrong. Why? Because alcohol actually only numbs us and makes us forget stress temporarily. That is, drinking alcohol is not a permanent solution to free us from suffering. When we wake up after drinking, we may feel more pain similar to what the ancient Chinese said, drowning one's sorrows in alcohol only leads to even more sorrow. Therefore, we should abandon alcohol and seek a better way to relieve our suffering. The causes of suffering are many, but most of them are because we fail to perform our duty and fulfill our obligations. This is the root cause of our suffering in this life. Therefore, rather than numbing ourselves with alcohol, we ought to be responsible and sincerely practice the five human relationships. Only in this way will we truly solve the problem and enjoy a happy and fulfilling life. Getting drunk to forget our problems is not the right way to permanently free us from pain. 
Another saying used by those who drink is that drinking is a way to make friends. Is that true? We can't disagree with that. However, as a matter of fact, we should realise that it is hard to make good friends, especially when their mind is not clear and still under the influence of alcohol. Even though they are our buddies when we wine and dine them, will they be around and helpful when we are in trouble? It is hard to become good friends with one who is regularly drunk, so we ought to make friends on the basis of morality and righteousness, not on who we drink with. Apart from the above two excuses for drinking, some Chinese say that alcohol is an important part of traditional Chinese culture. Is that true? Well, let's take a look. What is the real Chinese drinking culture? We can be inspired by a story recorded in Suo Zuan, the ancient commentary on the Chinese history book *Spring and Autumn*. In 672 BCE, the state of Chen underwent turmoil, and Crown Prince Wu Ko was killed. At that time. Prince Chen Wan fled to the state of Qi. Then Duke Huan of Qi wanted to appoint him as a minister. Chen Wan declined graciously, saying, "I'm in exile in the state of Qi. You've done me such a great favor by taking me in. How could I accept such a high official position?" In the end, Duke Huan appointed him as Master of Works. An official position that was in charge of artisans and craftsmen. Chen Wan accepted it. Soon afterwards, he invited Zhu Quan to drink with him. The two of them drank happily into the evening. Then Zhu Quan said, "Why not light candles and keep drinking?" You can see that Zhu Quan was really enjoying himself. Upon hearing that. Most people would certainly have agreed to his request, but Chen Wan did not. Instead, he politely declined by saying, "I only prepare to have a banquet with Your Majesty during the day, but have no intention to do so at night. Your Majesty, I'm afraid that I cannot oblige you." Chen Wan then explained his reasons by stating the following. Wine is used to help complete a ritual. One cannot continue indulging in excessive drinking. This is known as righteousness. Having completed the drinking ritual with the country's leader without causing him to overindulge, this is benevolence. Therefore, from this story, what is the purpose of serving alcohol in a banquet in traditional Chinese culture? It only serves to finalize the ritual. The Chinese say a banquet without alcohol is not a banquet at all. Alcohol in a banquet is important for completing rituals, but people should not indulge. This is righteousness. Chen Wan served alcohol to complete the rituals to Duke Huan, but did not let him drink excessively and harm his body. This is genuine care for the ruler, in accordance with benevolence. Upon hearing such words, Duke Quan was too embarrassed to continue. Therefore, the banquet ended there. From this story, we can see that even though a request was from a ruler, ancient Chinese would tactfully decline the request if it did not conform to rites. We should not overdo anything. We ought to behave appropriately, with a sense of propriety, in conformity with the proper level of rights and moral standards. Therefore, what is the role of alcohol in Chinese drinking culture? Alcohol only functions to help perfect the ritual. That's it. Do not go any further than necessary. And absolutely, do not let people indulge in drinking. Alcohol abuse ultimately harms our body and ruins our morality. 
In ancient China, in order to prevent people from drinking excessively, the Chinese designed special wine cups. They had two small poles near the top of the cups. When the cup was raised to drink, the two poles would be facing directly into the drinker's eyes. What did it imply? It was a reminder to drink in moderation, without indulgence. Otherwise, one would have to worry about his eyes becoming blind or impaired. Therefore, what is the essence of Chinese drinking culture? Drink in moderation to prevent damaging our health and morality. Do not abuse alcohol. It can make us lose courtesy, civility and dignified behaviour. This is the essence of Chinese drinking culture. Previously through Zhuo Chuan and the governing principles of ancient China, Professor Liu talked about ancient rulers and famous scholars, distinct attitudes towards drinking that resulted in different consequences that confirmed the adverse effects of excessive drinking. Yu the Great rejected wine and the Xia dynasty prospered. King Chie of Xia and King Zhou of Shang indulged in wine and their nations fell. The number of human tragedies and the rise and fall of dynasties are all closely associated with indulgence in alcohol. Alcohol itself has no fault, but rather it is the amount of consumption that reflects the quality of an individual's moral character and a leader's governance of the country. Furthermore, Professor Liu told us about the real Chinese drinking culture. Wine is used to help complete a ritual. One cannot continue indulging in excessive drinking. This is known as righteousness. Having completed the drinking ritual with the country's leader without causing him to indulge, this is benevolence. In Professor Leo's opinion, indulgence in alcohol is by no means part of the drinking culture. On the contrary, it reveals the lack of self-cultivation and of moral and cultural education. Let us continue with lectures on the governing principles of ancient China. Desires should not be indulged. When talking about culture, we should understand that the nature of culture is transforming people through cultural practices. For example, after we hear a poem, a song or fable, we will be able to change our temperament, transform evil into goodness, correct our faults and wrongdoings, and improve our characters. This is the true nature of culture. The drinking culture has the same nature and is bound to help people transform evil into goodness and ordinary people into sages. After studying the governing principles of ancient China, we understand the true nature of drinking culture is wine is used to help complete a ritual one cannot continue indulging in excessive drinking. Then how can we refrain from indulging in alcohol? Here is a good method. Observe a drunk's behaviour at a banquet. When we do this, we will realise that when we are drunk, our behaviour is the same. This is similar to losing our usual dignified manner, being mocked and disrespected. Do we want to behave in such a manner? If not, then do not indulge in drinking. In the Buddhist sutras, the adverse effects of drinking are specifically described and summarised into ten faults or effects. The first effect is an ugly complexion. A drunk's complexion usually turns ugly and evil, with a reflection of intoxication in the eyes. The second effect is to be regarded as inferior. When people become drunk, they behave in an undignified manner. They lurch and are unable to even stand steadily. They behave frivolously and tend to be despised and loathed by others. The third effect is to suffer blurred vision. 
frequent consumption of alcohol can cause blurred and impaired vision. The fourth effect is the appearance of anger. Due to the effects of alcohol, a drunk's emotions cannot be properly controlled. They are easily irritated and can lose their temper with anyone, regardless of whether they are relatives or virtuous and kind people. This is especially true when they complain about someone or something. Being in a state of intoxication, they usually cannot stop themselves from speaking improperly. Drunks can't hide anything. As recorded in the six strategies compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, one way to find out whether a man was qualified to be a general was to make him drunk and observe his behaviour. The fifth effect is ruin of their career and financial resources. Alcohol damages one's career, especially in business. Something can easily go wrong if the drunk conducts business under the influence of alcohol. Once an ill-conceived contract is signed, it will be too late to regret. Therefore, drinking creates an obstacle to one's career. The sixth effect is sickness. It is well known that alcohol abuse negatively affects one's health, both physically and mentally. It is impossible for an alcohol abuser to have good health. The seventh effect is involvement in disputes and quarrels. The intoxicated person tends to get angry and start arguments with others. As they lose self-control, a drunk will most likely provoke a fight with others and even lose their lives due to destructive aggression. The eighth effect is a bad reputation. If one is frequently intoxicated and loses the ability to properly behave, no one will like them. Their bad names and reputation will be well known far and wide. The ninth effect is the loss of wisdom. Alcohol causes memory loss, disorientation, confusion, ignorance and audacity. This is the loss of wisdom. Finally, the tenth effect is to fall into the evil paths at the end of one's life. Since alcohol causes so many issues and misfortunes, it would be wise to avoid it. In Professor Leo's opinion, Chinese drinking culture evolved from the ceremonies of worshipping heaven and ancestors, as well as the highest standards of social etiquette in ancient times. The drinking culture was solemn, civilized, and elegant by nature. It fostered transforming evil into goodness and ordinary people into sages. From Chinese drinking culture, refined scholars like Li Bai, Du Kang, Liu Ling, Tao Youming, Su Shi, and Ou Yangshu emerged. However, the essence of Chinese drinking culture has been destroyed by indulgence. According to the adverse effects of alcohol stated in the Buddhist sutras, Professor Liao summarized the ten great faults of alcohol consumption to warn us that we need to eliminate the bad habits of alcohol abuse and indulgence. In addition to indulgence in wealth, sex, eating and drinking, what other excessive desires should we stay vigilant against? Please continue with the lectures on the governing principles of ancient China. Desires should not be indulged. After talking about the harm caused by excessive eating and drinking, we are now going to look at indulgence in playing. In Lao Tzu, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it says, Wallowing in the thrill of game hunting can make us reckless and lose our sanity. Our disposition will become wild. Furthermore, the mind of killing animals does not correspond with humans' true nature of benevolence. Mencius said, gentlemen with noble character will stay away from the slaughterhouse and kitchen. Why? 
because they are the places where animals like chickens and pigs are killed. If people watch these scenes frequently, then over time they will regard killing as a normal activity and gradually lose their heart of compassion. Therefore, persons with noble characters should stay away from activities associated with killing animals to maintain their compassion. As we know, the ancient emperors did not have as many recreational activities as we do now, so hunting became their main entertainment. This was especially true for those like Emperor Tai Tsung, who had a military background and really enjoyed hunting. However, this desire to hunt was always restrained by his wise ministers and his own self-reflection. Once, when Tai Tsung was out hunting, he encountered unexpectedly heavy rain, which made his raincoat leak. He asked his minister, Guna Lu, who was responsible for admonishing the ruler, how can a raincoat be made so it won't leak? Guna Lu was a knowledgeable scholar who was nicknamed the Library of Classics. He humorously replied, if we could use roof tiles to make a raincoat, it would definitely not leak. How could a raincoat be made of roof tiles? It's absolutely impossible. It would be too heavy and inconvenient to wear. So what did Guna Lu really mean? Emperor Tai Zong was very smart and realised the implied meaning. Guna Lu wanted to remind the emperor to stay in the house made of roof tiles instead of indulging in hunting. Upon hearing this, Emperor Tai Zong decided to quit hunting. To show his appreciation for Guna Lu's advice, Emperor Tai Zung rewarded him with hundreds of metres of silk and a belt decorated with gold. From this, we can see that Emperor Tai Zung enjoyed hunting, but he also knew the harm of hunting because of his familiarity with the classics. When the minister remonstrant reminded Emperor Tai Zung, he could accept it with great pleasure. In addition, he even encouraged his ministers to give him all kinds of advice. Although some of them were against his hobbies, he still gladly accepted the advice. Let's now look at current modern society. Hunting is not as common as before. Children living in cities nowadays don't have many chances to go hunting. But what do they do for fun instead? They play video games. In these video games, in order to advance to the next level, the players have to beat or kill a certain number of people or animals. Now there are many people indulging themselves in playing games and forgetting about the real world. I heard a news story about a child who was about 12. The child killed someone and yet, shockingly, he was not terrified at all. Why? because he had been killing in video games every day. Consequently, all this killing numbed his mind. A policeman asked him, how could you make such a big mistake? What did the child say? He'll come back to life in a moment. In this case, indulging in video games had caused cognition disorders in the young boy. He could no longer distinguish the real world from the virtual world. I believe that those who produce violent video games, just like those who write and distribute pornographic books, will absolutely end up with great misfortune. Apart from video games, what else are people keen to indulge in? Collecting rare treasures in Lao Tzu, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it says, being desirous of rare and precious objects can cause our greediness to grow and drive us to behave wickedly. Valuable and uncommon items such as gold, silver and jewellery, rare birds and animals and jade and antiques are what people like. Upon seeing them, people may become greedy and want to possess them. Some people spend their entire life indulging in collecting rare and precious objects. They forsake looking after their children and parents, not to mention improving their spiritual awareness. In the end, their whole life is filled with sorrow. 
Collecting rare treasures not only harms oneself, but also adversely affects the social atmosphere. In Huai Nanzi, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, we read that a social trend in a decaying world has a significant feature of valuing rare items from afar and cherishing valuables which are difficult to obtain but neglecting necessities of life. With this social trend, the simple and genuine social atmosphere will gradually fade away and goodness will turn into evil. People will lose their manners. Once people's desires have been aroused by this social trend, those without money will try to steal. Then theft will get worse and worse. That is all for now. Thank you very much. Previously, Professor Liu told us that indulgence in collecting rare treasures will corrupt the simplicity and integrity of the social atmosphere. When playing games becomes the national mainstream and collecting rare treasures turns into a social fashion, social culture is bound to become corrupted and national power is bound to decline. A ruler will neglect national affairs, government officials will not perform their duties, and people will not be willing to progress. If the whole country is indulging in pleasure-seeking, then internal turmoil and external threats will be imminent and the country will be in danger. Such tragedies recorded in history books are rather common. Eating, drinking and playing are pleasure-seeking desires. In the Book of History, compiled in the governing principles of ancient China, it says, being disrespectful and playing pranks on people will ruin our virtues. Indulgence in objects that give us pleasure will ruin our ambitions. Excessive pleasure-seeking will not only weaken one's will, but also disturb people's mind. Professor Liu hereby warned us, desires should not be indulged.